Zap, Big Earl Nortown Sound, how's it going? A hundred vids. A hundred vids. I'm at almost a hundred thousand views. This just blows my mind on so many levels. It's profound. So uh, there you go, hundred vids. Um, for those of you who've been watching my vids, you know I'm always doing the old man. One of these days I'm going to teach you youngsters about this and that and the other thing. Um, so I decided I better start doing that, and I'm going to do that under this Gear Yak title. So if I'm talking Gear Yak, I'm talking about gear. Um, and I'm going to try to talk more about the why rather than the what. There's a lot of what out there. There's not a lot of why out there. And I'm going to start off with the old power block here. Uh, for those of you who've been uh, watching any of my vids, uh, you know that unless it's something where I specifically need tubes, I'm always going through the power block. Um, so why am I talking about this all of a sudden? Not that long ago, uh, it was the Edmonton Fall Guitar Show. Went there, met a lot of really great people, had a really good time, sold lots of stuff. It was awesome. Uh, blew a few heads. I always like doing that. Uh, I brought the backup power block. Um, I have two of these uh, because it was in the carrying case, so I just grabbed it. I had about a dozen people asking me, like, what, what, what the, what is this thing, right? And I had about six offers because it didn't have the, the notice on it. This is not a joke. There's a reason for this. Um, so let's talk about the power block, shall we? In my books, the power block is one of those amps which is an heir apparent to the JC120. So right there, there's a whole bunch of people saying, nope, next, another video, need another video, not those horrible things, because, well, they're wimps. They don't understand the power of these sorts of things. Um, and a nice compact head, which is great. And these things are a huge secret weapon. Uh, they're really starting to escalate in value. Let's really, really quickly go through the what first. These were produced in the 1990s, uh, approximately five years. Uh, so what you have, we have a one channel amp. We have Z input, we have Z gain. This does do some pretty serious distortion. Mino likes. Uh, it's not bad for that sort of damaged era Grey Gin sound, but yeesh, outside of that. Three band EQ, which is pretty aggressive and pretty broad ranging, which I like. We have the master level volume and a headphone jack and the great big logo and it lights up in the A, which is kind of goofy. And the really totally focus in on the typeface, goofy print, but eh, whatever, it works. So when we come around back, we find more of that goofy typeface and really the interesting aspects about this amp. So we start, speaker out, mono, read that, shall we? Can we read that? What does that say? That's right, 150 watts. This thing's got a lot of juice to it, right? Classic Class D amplifier with an amazing amount of input headroom. You can also run in stereo outs if you want to with a bridging switch to allow you to do that, which is great fun. Built-in DI with a level line on it, which is incredibly useful on this device. The incredibly hilarious 1990s RCA ins. Yeah, that kind of dates this thing. I think this was archaic when this came out, wasn't it? I don't know. We have an effects loop, uh, which does not have a level or anything like that. I'm not big on effects loops. That'll be another video. But uh, it's there if you need it. The incredibly tiny power switch, which still hasn't broken on either one of them, as well as the standard three-prong out and all of your usual yada, yada, yada. Um, so, yeah, 150 watts, tons of headroom, tons of volume. So what's this thing actually good for? So just in the basic sounds, uh, usually when I'm playing it somewhere in this neck of the woods, um, the EQ changes because 
you need to change out by guitar, you need to change out for the sound you're going with. This would be my normal sort of clean tone. Now, loads of you are like, oh, wow, that's way too clean, dude. Well, go clean or go home, you know? If you're gonna and to give you a rough idea, um, according to the iPod there, some decibel uh, meter thing that I got, that's saying that's somewhere around 85 to 90 decibels. And yet, dirt clean. This is a typical class D amp though, where your gain, as you bring it up, your volume goes up. And I don't like the gain. Uh, let me just try a quick sound here. Just to be like every other idiot on YouTube, there's, there, there's my scoop, dude. And um, for those of you who are kind of noticing things, see where the level is? Um, that's a hair quieter than where I had it on clean. If I... Okay, so that's the what. Now, Let's discuss the why. Okay, so we're back to Gorilla Videography again. Uh, yeah. Tripod, what's that? Um, so this is an example of where a high input headroom amplifier really comes in handy. So I have my small stone here. I love this small stone. This small stone is so much fun. In behind it, I've got the Sovtech, armed, locked, loaded, ready to roll. Um, if I were to try those two behind anything below, let's say, a twin or like a 100 watt um, British style amp, um, yeah, it's just going to, it's going to blow the amp up, basically. Uh, they really can't take that kind of, the frequencies that I'm going to be throwing into the input on this thing. So again, bypass. This is a small stone on light mode. I love that sound. And then, if we throw it on high mode, this is where people tend to run away from this pedal. If I were to put this through my Deluxe, it would start distorting because of how thick that filter is on it, right? So, if we go in and we kick in the Big Muff... shaking in here every time that filter swings around on there um, and also what's cool about that filter if you listen to it it almost adds a little bit of vibrato to things which is really cool again in order to get that intensity of sound you need something that has a high amount of input headroom you need what's now being called in the industry a pedal friendly amplifier this is a pedal friendly amplifier I'll give you another killer example of that. Tripod. Is that what you call those? Tri Tripod. <laughs> Gotta pick one of those up one of these decades. Um, so anyways, in behind we have the power block. Here we have the hog. And we still have the stove tech in front of it. Now, there is a lot that you can do with the hog though, which is incredibly fascinating, that you wouldn't dare try doing on 
a typical low input headroom tube amp. You just wouldn't dare. I'm going to give one of my favorite tricks that I love doing. Octave all the way up, sub octave all the way up, and then I'm going to play with the filter. Okay? So here we'll start with clean bypass yet again. That's a cool sound. Stuff shaking around here, right? I'm probably pushing 95 decibels. I've just clicked in the stove tech. I had to turn it down a bit. Listen to this. Back off the volume a bit, bring that filter back down. And you can do this. Again, if I tried that with my Deluxe, I'd probably blow it up. Let's take that to an even more extreme example. I've adjusted the, uh, the amp EQ just a little bit, and I've swapped over to Trevor. We're running some Mudbucker here. drum machines through the power block, I've run keyboards through the power block, I've used it as a crew PA system to record vocals to get the effect and it works. The cab I usually run with the power block is actually, it's an old Ashdown uh, 10 inch woofer. I find I tend not to blow as many woofers as tweeters when I'm playing guitar. Um, and I kind of blew out the preamp doing this. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was not pretty. I've got an old Galen Kruger backline in the basement where the head just totally distorts now for me doing, well, basically if I kick in the soap tech, it was something like this. that's in there this amp is just taking it so when you get right down to it it's like a super versatile amplifying head and that's why I keep this around and I think this is why people are going for them mainly because you need to amplify something it'll take it trust me it'll take anything Yo, the crate power block I done did yak ya um Find one of these things, should pick them up. Great little tool. Um, I've seen people trying to get like 600 bucks for these things now, which to me is just beyond the point of ludicrous. But um, I don't know what anything's worth anymore. I'm just some crazy old Scotsman out on the prairies, okay? So there you go. Anyways, 100 videos. Thank you so much to everybody who's been watching these things. Much respect to you, much respect to the subscribers. You know, much respect to the trolls. I never understood this troll thing until I got on YouTube. It's incredible. I never knew there were so many people with no fucking life in my life. So, hey trolls, that's for you, okay trolls? Instead of making comments, maybe you trolls ought to be playing some guitar, okay? Instead of worrying about, you know, people not being in tune, maybe put away your tab books. Losers. Anyways, um, 
again, 100 vids, thanks a lot. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you want one of these now, because I, I do like them. They're awfully fun. And to the people who are trying to buy mine, no, no, no. They belong to the fat man. So, big girl, northtownsound.com. I don't even know where I threw the pick. Anyways, later.